So chapter one is down, and we know very, very little. We know a few names. We know that the narrator seems to be sick as hell, and it's a mental sickness. Dear Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimeter using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. Okay, that... That definitely implies that he is British, the way that he spelled a couple things there, and the place names. Uh, there might be counterparts in uh, the Northeast United States, but as far as I know, um, Exeter, Bristol, and then some form of Hampton. I'm sorry, it was like Southampton? Could have been West Hampton that he said. Those are all in England, and he's looking for a spot in the middle of a drive? but it's not marked on the map. Huh. So let's head over here. Uh, there's a giant shipwreck down there. Uh, that is a container ship of some sort. For a container ship, it's rather small, though. Maybe because it's so old? Uh, but you know, I don't know very much about the history of container ships. That is not my forte. Um, but, yeah, for a container ship, it's, it's relatively small. I've begun to wonder if Donnelly's voyage here was as prosaic as it was presented. How disappointed not to have found the bones of the holy man. No wonder he hated the inhabitants so. To him, they must have seemed like barnacles mindlessly clinging to a mercy seat. Why cling so hard to the rock? Because it is the only thing that stops us from sliding into the ocean. Into oblivion. Oh wow, there's something written on the side there. What does it say? Neither did he eat nor drink. And that's where some of the uh, parallels to the Bible start coming in. That I mean, that sounds biblical, doesn't it? Neither did he eat nor drink. But uh, it's hard for me to say exactly what verse or what book that is from. I'm sure that is said a few times in the Bible, to be honest with you. Sounds like some sort of depression. Uh, that's usually what causes that kind of stuff. And once again, here's the name Donnelly again. I'm finding out a little bit more. He seemed very frustrated with the inhabitants of this island. But it's unclear really why, except that they they were too religious for him. Let's head down into the shipwreck down here and see if we can find something out. That is very, very rusty. And it looks like it's actually anchored on shore. Okay, it's anchored to the box there, but down here it's anchored to another box. Oh, that would be an old defibrillator. I recognize that paddle. It's only got... Oh, the other one's attached. I was about to say, it's only got one paddle. Now the other one's just uh, not off. It's, it's still on there as if it was charging or something. So let's head this way. Hopefully we can find out a little bit more about this Donnelly or the inhabitants or Esther? I don't know, he seems to be writing to Esther. Maybe we won't find out more about her. And we can make it right through here. Now I know, yeah, once again, this is this is a prime place for like a horror game, isn't it? An abandoned shipwreck like that, but trust me, there is nothing. You can ease your mind. There will be no scares. There will be no scares. That seagull that we that we did to, to begin the game, that's the biggest scare in the game by a mile. There is nothing. We'll just keep exploring. And hopefully we can find out something. We can start putting the pieces together. There must be a hole in the bottom of the boat. How else could new hermits have arrived? I assume he means crabs? Like hermit crabs? Hole in the bottom of the boat. Uh... I have no idea what that means, but there is there's a giant gaping hole in the bottom of that boat. That must be the one that he is talking about. And it looks like there is another path out of here now. That's that's where we came in. We head that way first. Let's head this way now and we should continue on and hopefully we can find some new interesting areas that will spark up new memories or 
dialogues. I had kidney stones and you visited me in the hospital. After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anesthetic, your outline and your speech both blurred. Now my stones have grown into an island and made their escape, and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. Oh. Oh, that that does not sound good. So he was in the hospital for kidney stones. Um, he he said that the the island formed out of his kidney stones. I assume that is a metaphor because uh, it is said that kidney stones can come from stress. Let's head down here. What the hell is this? But now whoever he's talking to was killed in a what drunk? charnel house lies at the foot of this abyss. Holy How crap. many dead shepherds could fill this hole? I don't know. Is that really the first thing that you think of when you see a giant gaping hole in the middle of the... Whoa. Um. Wow. That is a giant hole. And he wants to fill dead fill it with dead shepherds. Why shepherds? Why, why shepherds? Uh, so whoever he's talking to was killed, was killed in a car crash by a drunk driver. That, that doesn't sound good. Sound good at all? I don't know who he's talking to. Could it be a new character? Is it somebody we know? Is it Paul? Is it Donnelly? Is it Esther? Who knows? Oh, is that the is that the house you were talking about earlier? What'd you call it? Bothy? I don't think I've ever heard that term before. But what the hell? This looks man-made. I've Man begun my ascent on the green slope of the western side. The western I've side. looked deep into the mountain from the shaft and understood that I must go up and then find the way under. I will stash the last vestiges of my civilization in the stone walls and work deeper from there. I'm drawn by the aerial and the cliff edge. There is some form of rebirth waiting for me there. Okay, so... Apparently, the narrator is now telling us what we need to do, and here are some surgical tools. I mean, we got, we got like, what do they call them? Forceps. Those are syringes, obviously. I don't see like a scalpel or anything, but that is all surgical equipment, and you can't get away with those those noises. I don't know what musical instrument that is, but some of that sounds like vocalization to me. Sounds like a person's voice, not necessarily a musical instrument. Let's head up there. He told us we need to go to the other side and. Down? He said down, didn't he? God, look at that. The landscape. And it's still going. You can see the waves crash on the rocks. How awesome is that? That is a mile away, and we can. They, they still rented the that out. was constructed originally in the early 1700s. That's a long time ago. By then, shepherding had formalized into a career. The first habitual shepherd was a man called Jacobson from a lineage of migratory Scandinavians. He was not considered a man of breeding by the mainlanders. He came here every summer whilst building the Bothy, hoping eventually that becoming a man of property would secure him a wife and a lineage. Donnelly records that it did not work. He caught some disease from his malcontented goats and died two years after completing it. There was no one to carve white lines into the cliff for him either. Okay, now we're starting to get. Now we got another name, Jakobsen. What the hell is Jakobsen? And I don't. Okay, well this is this is clearly a Warshack test, and I'm not telling you what that looks like to me. There be dragons. Uh, what? Okay, the name Jakobsen, and he he said that he was a shepherd, but inventory. What? A trestle table we spread wallpaper on in our first home. A folding chair. I laughed at you for bringing camping in the lakes. I was uncomfortable later, and you laughed then. This diary, the bed with the broken springs. Once asleep, you have to remember not to dream. A change of clothes. Donnelly's book, stolen from Edinburgh Library on the way here. I will burn them all on the last morning and make an aerial of my own. Okay, so here's the bed. Once again, this is where he was staying. I assume that's his diary that he was talking about. But to be honest, that looks like a ledger to me. Like an old style. Like what QuickBooks replaced? A ledger. And then that is... That is like a molecule without. No, there are there are a few symbols on it, but 
It's hard for me to make out exactly what's going on in there. It just kind of looks like a honeycomb to me. They didn't label all their parts, but this is where he lived, and he burnt a whole bunch of shit. Uh, what does that say? Uh, Hebridian history? Oh! Oh, oh, oh okay. I, I think I've heard of those islands. The Hebrides? Um... I believe those are islands. Aren't they like off the coast of Scotland? There's no... How is this stuff all here from like Scottish? 1700s? Oh, I've never been to Scotland. I can't say whether or not there is like an island like this, but... Alright, do we have anything in here? That same... Uh, oh, it's not the same. I was about to say it's the same molecule. It, it's kind of similar in design, but it is missing is missing all the labels so it's really hard to say what all that is you have anything on the ground here it's hard for me to read it um, the London Clinic so it's another reference to I don't know surgery we're definitely getting a lot of references here to like surgery and then that chemical hmm. hopefully we can find this out and I don't know if this guy hates Jacobson? Because, I mean, he hated the shepherds. He said he wanted to fill a freaking hole full of shepherds, and Jacobson's the only shepherd that we know of so far. But, who knows? He said that Donnelly wrote a book about Jacobson? Why would you write a book about... Uh, apparently just a history of the island, maybe? So, I assume now that this is Scotland, um, because the Hebridean history, that might have been Donnelly's book? Hard to say. Uh, it was like a leaf or something. So is that another seagull? No. No, it's not. And... Wow, look at that. Okay. What? It's hard to see what that is. But I, I think that's our destination down there. We need to go to the cave. He left his body to the medical school and was duly opened out for a crowd of students 21 days after his passing. Ew. The report is included in my edition of his book. The syphilis had torn through his guts like a drunk driver, scrambling his organs like eggs on a plate. But enough definition remained for a cursory examination, and, as I suspected, they found clear evidence of kidney stones. What? He's likely to have spent the last years of his life in considerable pain. Perhaps this is the root of his laudanum habit. Although its use makes him an unreliable witness, I find myself increasingly drawn into his orbit. Okay. Uh, there were quite... what? Uh, once again, uh, another reference to a drunk driver of some sort. They found Jacobson in early spring. Stones. The thaw had only just come. Even though he'd been dead nearly seven months, his body had been frozen right down to the nerves and had not even begun to decompose. All around him, small flowers were reaching for the weak sun. The goats had adjusted happily to life without a shepherd and were grazing freely about the valley. Donnelly reports they hurled the body in fear and disgust down the shaft. But I cannot corroborate this story. Okay, well, Jacobson died. Uh, somebody else died and was was found with kidney stones. Didn't the narrator say he had kidney stone? I mean, I guess multiple people can have kidney stones, but I mean, as far as I know, we only have like five or six names here. How many people that? How many of those are are bound to have kidney stones? Oh, this is a ship! That's what this is. It's an old school ship. Like, to me, it looks kind of like Viking ish, but I, I don't know much about ships. I will gladly admit that. I just. I can't hide it. I don't know very much. It's just a wooden long ship with a single mast. Very narrow, if you ask me. But once again, I know very little about ships. Hmm. Cave or the gorge? I say we go for the gorge first. Climbing down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. The skin has turned a bright, tight pink, and the pain is crashing in on waves, winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggled back to the bothy to rest, but it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. They will keep me lucid for my final ascent. 
Alright, so he came down here and broke his leg, but it sounded like he wanted to come down here again or he wanted to climb something. Clothes! How clothes are these? I found just a random suitcase filled with clothes down here. Not that interesting, so let's just move into the cave then. Sorry about like the frame skip every once in a while here, but I, I don't honestly know what's causing it. So we'll just have to go through it. We'll just have to go through it a little bit here. So, I mean, so many pieces together, uh, trying to fit them together is rather difficult. Hmm. Do these rocks look, like, natural to you? They seem to have, like, a, a man-made carved edge to them and, and parts. I don't know. Oh wow, this cave seems to go on for a while. Hey. Whoa. There's a candle. Wait. Is this a candle that he was speaking about before? Dude, look at that. Look at all those stalactites. Th I know those stalactites, they're on the ceiling. Here are the stalagmites here on the ground. Oh, wow. Do you want me to go down there? I don't see anywhere else I can go. Oh, crap. And that looks like the end of chapter two. So we have figured out a little bit more, but we really only have more questions at this point. At least I do. Who, who the hell is this Jacobson, Donnelly, Paul, Esther?